Hello, I'm Abia X Toy Cat, and as you might imagine, I've checked out a lot of seeds of my time for the course of Seed Sunday because I like seeing what seeds are really great and interesting and worth checking out in some way. But sometimes I find seeds that are literally the exact opposite, and that's where I would say today's one falls in because it has the reputation for spawning you in lava. Literally, not just like, oh, it spawns you near lava, it's a really dangerous thing. This is a seed that supposedly spawns you in a giant lava pit, and I wanted to show it all to you because I'm going to show you literally the loading in process because it sounds so insane it can't humanly be possible. So yeah, this is potentially the worst seed ever, but let's find out by loading it up in a normal survival world and seeing exactly what happens. Okay, and as you can see, uh, it was pretty true to its reputation, I think. Uh, you, I could be wrong there, but it does seem as though I've spawned directly in some lava, and this time, uh, no, it spawns me on some water, but two seconds later, not even two seconds, a full second later, we're straight inside the lava. Yeah, so this is a seed that, <laughs> it's very hard to see this immediately, but it spawns you inside of a ravine, mostly filled with lava, meaning that most of the time, your spawn location is going to be directly inside a block of lava, because Minecraft tries to spawn you as low down as your spawn coordinates will allow. So for instance, the lowest I can be right now is obsidian, but the lowest you can be if it tries to spawn you here is right the way down at the bottom of the lava, which means you're instantly dead and it's terrible. So yeah, I'm sure it goes without saying, this is a pretty horrific spawn. You never want to spawn directly into lava, because it means that my starting map that I was meant to have, uh, that you get with Minecraft Bedrock Worlds, if you click it, uh, the starting map is gone because it's instantly burned, and it means that I'm now inside of a ravine, and not just any ravine, by the way, because you might think, like, oh yeah, ravines, they're not always so deep, right? Nope, this is a Minecraft Bedrock ravine. It's the deepest type you can find in Minecraft Bedrock, and you can see how it's at Y11. If you look in the top left, I've got such an insanely low level that I'm down to, which means if I want to get to the surface, I have to climb about 50 blocks. It's actually more like 54, but I've got to climb like 54 to 58 blocks to get out of here to the surface. And although there's a waterfall right here that seems like it can help me, I mean, look how handily things are going right here. You can see how this will only take me so far. It takes me to about 46 or 48, but then there's no way to get from here to actually to the top of this thing, because guess what? We've got to break some blocks if we want to do that. Meaning that not only is this a seed that spawned you in a ravine, not only is it a seed that spawned you in lava the first time and very close to lava every other time after that, but also if you want to get out of this place, you're not going to be able to do it the normal way, because you can't make a pickaxe because no wood, you have to break yourself a bunch of dirt, which by the way, all it would take is using a shovel and taking it all up, and then other people wouldn't be able to use, so you have to take all of this dirt, or you have to just break stone with your fist, but you have to do something along these lines and get out of there, oh and by the way, because the entire thing's surrounded by caves, because ravines often do intersect with caves, stuff like this can end up happening, meaning not only is this all of this stuff stacking on top of each other, but I'm also being attacked by two skeletons, one of which is wearing gold armor. This is only on normal difficulty. It can get harder than this, by the way. And uh, yeah, basically life is pain, is what I'm saying. So if you can escape all of that, what you can end up doing is you can start working your way out of here if you really want to. It's pretty tricky to do, and you're gonna need a lot of dirt if we're being entirely realistic, but you can in fact get yourself out of here, make yourself a little nerd pole. And just like that, with two blocks to spare, we're now at the surface. Except it's not a particularly great surface, because most of what you're going to see here is a giant ice sheet, which, you know, they're nice to see and all, but they're not nice to see when you haven't got a single piece of wood. No, if you want to get some wood, you're going to have to head to the other side of the ravine, which, you know, watch out for skeletons and stuff, because there is a single tree found over here, which is kind of nice. I mean, you need more than one tree in Minecraft, and fortunately, planes at least have the one trees every now and then. But if you want to find a decent forest of a, you know, a sizable number of trees, you've got to head a few hundred blocks that way. And just remember, this is after you've been attacked by skeletons, this is after you've had to break a bunch of blocks anyway. So yeah, if you want to get really started on this world, it's one of the hardest ones to do so with. Obviously, every Minecraft seed is balanced in such a way that it's meant to be very easy for you to get all this stuff done, but this seed is not. And allow me to switch out to creative to show you the rest of this seed, because obviously there's a lot of great distances involved, so it's going to be easier to fly, because you might then say like, oh, but there's a village over here, and this is what I love about this seed. So we've been talking about blacksmith so much recently, and it might seem like, oh yeah, every Minecraft seed just has so much free stuff blown at you. No, the nearest village to spawn does not have a blacksmith. You have to trade if you want to get your stuff from this village, which means even the closest source of usually free stuff, uh, it's all going to have to come from trades if you want to do it that way. Then, if you head to the edge of the desert, by the way, past another miniature ravine, if only you spawn in one of these, right? No, you got the, <laughs> the deepest type possible. But then, then you can find yourself the closest forest all the way over here. And it's spruce wood, which I like spruce, but I think a lot of people would not place it in their top three. But to head back to the spawn, because now we've covered the kind of escape route and what you can kind of get when you do that, let's talk about what else is around the spawn area, because I find this to be such a fascinating spawn. First of all, there's this iceberg over here, sometimes which spawns with a mushroom. Again, most Minecraft seeds are pretty consistent with their block placement, but not this one. 
Because if I show you a previous iteration of the seed, uh, the first one I loaded up just to check it, as you can see, there very much is a mushroom in there. And it was true the second time too, but not the third time. But yeah, this feels like it really shouldn't be there. I know definitely mushrooms are not meant to spawn as part of an iceberg. So how did they get there? I don't know. Why is it not there sometimes? I also don't know. It's one of those <laughs> miniature mysteries in Minecraft. Uh, that you just have to deal with, I guess, question mark. Anyway, so besides that mushroom being a weird little thing, uh, we also have the fact that if you look around the rest of the spawn, there's a lot of other strange things around here. And to give an example of what I mean, because this is a ravine which clearly isn't its full size, you can see how it's been cut off by uh, the river over there, or at least that's what it looks like. You can see how like, oh yeah, so you might expect to see some more ravine, maybe over there. No, you see a little bit more ravine over here. For some reason, this counts as a river or something, and it cuts the ravine in twine, if you will. And uh, if you go down this height side of the ravine, you you can see how ridiculously small it is, but then also you can see water right next to lava. This shouldn't be possible because they're, you know, when they spawn in, they don't necessarily break each other. Uh, for some reason, you've got lava which goes straight onto a block here, doesn't break water, and that's strange enough by itself. Like, okay, so there's water, there's lava. They mix in weird, unpredictable ways, but then also, if you go over here, if you swim down a little bit, you can see how there's a giant underwater cave. This is how you know it thought it was crossing a river or something, or it was crossing some body of water, because there's a underwater cave complete with magnets blocks. But yeah, this is one of the closest finds of magma next to spawn. As you can see, all it takes to get to the ravine from here is about three stone block placement, uh, breaking, I should say, not placements, but three stone blocks broken, and all of a sudden you get magma. I mean, obsidian's there too, but you have obsidian all around you. So you spawn within 10 blocks of that, which is not normal to say the least. But as well as that, we also have one of the closest spawns to diamonds, I think is humanly possible in Minecraft, because you spawn in this ravine, right? And it's uh, pretty rough in a lot of ways, but if you can get yourself going real fast, and if you did happen to have a bonus chest or a set of stuff in here, then one of the things you could do with literally 20 blocks of spawning, or you have to mine this way, just a little bit, and one of the things you'll find will shock you, because get that, there's diamonds here. You can find yourself eight diamonds, or seven diamonds, my bad, I am so misleading, but you can find yourself seven diamonds that close to spawn, that many blocks away from the spawn lair, no digging down, no tunneling techniques, uh, technically you have to jump back down here, because you, again, usually don't have a pickaxe, but still, finding diamonds that close to spawn, if you want, you could break there your fist and get some diamonds to stare at. But the point that you can find them that close to spawn is insane. And obviously also because there's a bunch of caves coming off here, as you saw from those mean skeletons earlier, um, there is in fact some gold ore you can find. There's some iron, there's some coal, there's redstone. I'm sure you've seen it. I also saw some lapis around here earlier. The point is you'll find all of the ores around here in abundance. And uh, it's kind of interesting to me because this proves a really fascinating fundamental point of Minecraft because Minecraft tries to generate every seed with the same rough structure even though the biomes are going to be different and even though every single biome is different on every single seed and every single location even though those things change from seed to seed all the time um, even the worst possible permutation of all those things has some benefits Minecraft is a game which proves one of the most useful points you can learn in life which is that everything is a trade-off in some way and although this makes a trade-off which is horrendous for yourself this is the worst Worst spawn ever. This is, you know, like it doesn't take a genius to explain why spawning in lava is worse than not spawning in lava. But even though this is one of the worst spawns ever and one of the worst seeds ever because of that spawn, it also then has some benefits because what? What's that? We can find ourselves some diamonds that fast. What's that? We can find ourselves some magma much faster than a normal seed, which is great for doing lots of weird things in water physics. The fact that, you know, even the worst seed ever has so many positives, which by the way, might make the seed worth playing in its own right might be appealing enough to some of you that you're like, yeah, of course I'm going to check out this seed is really great. Because again, even though, uh, you know, it's pretty negative early game, there is a pillager outpost there and you'll know where it is pretty much immediately. That's kind of wonderful, right? The fact that even though it's not the greatest for diversity and finding yourself, uh, you know, like a, a few certain blocks that only spawn in some biomes, the fact that there is a nice mixture of plains and deserts and savannah means you actually might want to speed around this seed. Uh, again, I... The, the spawn is kind of a fun little joke and maybe that's a, a thing you don't want to work with. But yeah, Minecraft proves the age-old rule of one man's trash is another man's treasure. One person's amazing Minecraft seed can be someone else's worst one because you don't care about getting the free loot because you want to work for it. And one person's, you know, worst seed ever might be great for someone else because you can trap people because it's like a challenge to work through. And honestly, a part of me really likes that. I would love to see how fast I could go from most challenging spawn ever to defeating the Ender Dragon, for example. And I think this seed really would be great for that. Because as you know, if you've ever watched one of my Minecraft about X runs, right? 
kind of beat the game with certain, uh, you know, permutations, uh, like w weird challenges, like without jumping, without crafting, etc, etc. But as you might know from one of those runs, it's really important to be able to find Enderman, and Desert's one of the better biomes for it, because they're not affected by rain, and they're pretty flat, so you can usually find more Enderman. Um, and because of that, having so much desert over here, really, really wonderful, right? Also, there's desert temples around here, and it's, it's a really great seed for lots of other things, it's just really, really bad in one department. And yeah, uh, it's worth mentioning some things in life are a zero-sum game where like uh, every single improvement to one thing is a downgrade to everything else. But lots of things in life are, the you know, the cases is there. there's just trade-offs being made. There are some things that are better, but in exchange, other things get worse. You know, maybe you can take that into consideration for your own life. Maybe every time, uh, you know, you eat pizza, it tastes good, but also you get larger. Every time you go to the gym, yeah, you, you might be more in shape, but you might be enjoying yourself less. I, I'm not sure if I'm actually trying to encourage you to eat pizza or go to the gym. You know, why not do both? Why not Why not do both every single day? That's that's the Toy Cat message of approval today. Go to the gym, eat a pizza, and then play this Minecraft seed and see if you can survive it, because it's a challenge I really like. Also, wait, because there's a slime here, it's also a slime chunk. Like, more reasons this seed is amazing as well as horrifying, just to throw that with the, the rest of those. But yeah, um, I th this is a uh, Tolia Seed I recommend. Tolia Seed that has got me fascinated, and if you all would like to see it, then let me know in the comments down below. Also, the thumbnail for this video was selected by Democracy, so if you don't like it, <laughs> I guess apologies for that one. But yeah, no, thank you so much for watching today's Seed Sunday. If you did like it, you can like it and let me know. If you really liked it, you can share it, and that's another way of letting me know. And you can also, I don't know, smash that bell or whatever people say. And that's how you can guarantee that you'll see me in the next seed, which won't be terrible, by the way. Usually the seeds I show off are generally quite good, which is, uh, yeah, you think, think you can see next time. But for now, thank you very much for watching, because I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. <laughs>